Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew Fraley. I'm the founder of BreakpointTrades.com. We've been bringing you advanced technical analysis, market commentary, trade ideas, and mechanical trading algorithms like you see here with our SPY and ES system. Been doing this since 2003 for individual traders and professional institutions. Okay, let's get started. We've got a lot to discuss. So, this is a comprehensive market newsletter from Breakpoint Trades. It's Sunday, July 3rd, 2022. So, first off, happy 4th of July, everyone. I'm sure a lot of you are out doing things with family, etc. while I'm sitting here recording. I'm trying to get this done so I can go to my own things. Anyway, this newsletter, let me go ahead and move this up out of the way. We don't need to see the recording there. So, this newsletter is divided into nine major sections. If you happen to be new here, these newsletters are very comprehensive. We cover a lot of things, probably be anywhere from 50 minutes to one hour, but these are very comprehensive, okay? Um, these, this is the order we're gonna go in. We're gonna look at the general market, major indexes from multiple time frames, big picture down to the smaller time frames. I'm gonna tell you what I think is gonna happen in the short term. You know our longer term view, of course, We've been calling for a bear market since December of last year, which has played out. We'll move into the major indic um, indicators. We'll look at bonds and interest rates. We'll move to major market sectors, commodities, currencies, precious metals. And I am going to go over a few trade ideas as well. Okay. Also, before I get into that, we've had very nice trades from our 21 reversion of mean systems. I'm not going to cover those here in the newsletter. I may do that separately, but because we're in a bear market, we've had about 30 system trades this year from our daily reversion to mean systems, and they've done very well. If you took all those trades at the very small position size, you'd have made over $30,000. You know, if you contrast that to our membership, which cost about $600 a year, you know, that's, you know, basically a lifetime that you paid for it, okay? Otherwise, a couple things. The major indexes, they all closed down strongly last week despite the rally back on Friday. The S&P ended up down about two and a quarter percent for the week. NASDAQ, 4.3%. Russell, 2.1%. Okay, these are some of the headlines from the news. The S&P, um, 500 first half, down 21%, worse since 1970 for the NASDAQ. Down 30%, worse since 2002. Tesla, worst quarter ever. Amazon, deepest drop since 2001. So a lot of negative stuff there, okay? Now, what do we see here going forward? I have some comments here in text. Again, I'm gonna discuss all this in the newsletter. A couple weeks ago, the S&P hit that low, just below the um, 3650 area, around 36. 36 was the low. We expected a rally. The rally moved up. It formed a lower high, stalled out at the daily ATR indicator. And we pulled back. S&P retraced last week to 61.8% of that pullback and then bounced on Friday. Now, what we favor is actually a move up from here. So we favor a continued move up that started last week on Thursday and Friday. And we are targeting initially, there's a big open gap at the 40-20 area is our target, okay? Then we look for a deeper wave B pullback and a move up maybe to the 42, 4300. The bearish view would just have us going right down right now, okay? Um, this is, you know, the we're now in July. A lot of economic data this week, especially the jobs report on Friday. Then you have ISM, ADP, and earnings season will be starting. Now, July tends to be a stronger month for the markets. So we'll see if that ends up being the case or not. Um, commodities have had a big correction. And I we called for that three weeks ago. Um, I did add some trade ideas here. One thing, we've had pretty big reversals on the 10-year treasury yield and uh, bonds, which we called for as well. Next. So this image here is a two-hour view of the S&P. And this is, I'll cover this again in the newsletter below, but this is kind of our favored view right now. So 
You can see the low we had there in mid-June. We rallied up, stalled here. Then we retraced up the last week. We traced just shy of that 61.8% Fib retracement, and we found support, and then we rallied into Friday, into the close. And we helped. That's what we were favoring if you go back and listen to my newsletter on Thursday. Now, the immediate bearish view, this is all our alternative view, would be would just have us go down right from here, which is definitely very plausible. You could see how this potential wedge could form where you get a move down, maybe then a bounce, then another move down. Let me go ahead and draw that in. So somewhat like this. And then you get a rally up. So that's, to me, that would be... The, Right now, that's our alternative view, okay? Otherwise, what we're favoring right now is that we put in a trade low here. We're looking for a move up this week and eventually fill this 420 open gap. That's a major important area. That's from early June. Then once we fill that, get some sort of ABC pullback. So it would be a wave A. B, you can count five waves up on this wave A here. And then you get another move up to the C, maybe all the way up to the 4,200, 4,300 area, and then you come back down. That's our favorite view, but like I said, this, you know, the alternative view would just have us going down right from here. So we'll see what happens when the U.S. cash markets open on Tuesday. And of course, futures are trading here tonight on Sunday and on Monday. Next. Item number three shows the index sector table, what transpired last week and on Friday, like I said, already covered. We had a decent rally on Friday, but we still closed down for the week quite strongly, you know, two and a half to 4% for the major indexes. You know, most of the sectors rallied on Friday, except for semiconductors. Now the semiconductors are the one flying the ointment here. They are super weak, but they are very oversold too. So we need to see this area bounce if we're gonna see the market bounce. Um, you can see what transpired for the week. Currencies, U.S. dollar had another big week, up 1%. Uh, cryptocurrencies, they all got hammered on the last week, but they are up over the weekend, and that's a positive for now. That's another thing we got to monitor is cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin. If Bitcoin holds up and tries to rally, that'll be a positive for the market. If Bitcoin were to, you know, something breaks there and, you get forced selling and Bitcoin crashes, well, then the mar that's going to drag the market down. So that's important to watch. Commodities here, uh, mixed bag. The general CR, well, I say that, I'm looking at the Friday data. For the week, commodities got pretty hammered. The general CRB was down 3.3%. Crude oil was slightly up, but all the other commodities got hammered. Natural gas down almost 9%. Um, copper. All the ags got hit, DBA, corn, wheat, all that stuff was down strongly. And of course, precious metals got hit, especially the stocks. GDX, the gold miners down over 5%. But I do think this area could, or there's a chance for it to find some sort of trade low here. July tends to be more of a seasonality bullish time for precious metals. And bonds, big move up in TLT 20 year last week, big move down in rates as you can see here. Next, item number four shows the economic news calendar. Again, first off, we have the FOMC minutes. That's obviously supremely important on Wednesday. And we have the jobs report on Friday. We have factory orders, ISM, ADP. And of course, we will be starting earnings season in July as well. Let's go ahead and move on to the index charts. So we're going to start with the bigger picture charts here, like we, we like to do this on the weekend. So here's a monthly view of the five key major indexes. Each candlestick is, represents one month. You can see going back to 2011. So here's the Dow, here's uh, the S&P. And you can see, you know, we had that very strong bull market from March 2009. We had a sharp correction in March, February, March 2020. And I call that a correction, not a bear market because it was short, it was fast. It was about one month long, you know, month and a half long. And we rallied right back. Bear markets, guys, are not just price decline, but they also are a time decline. You get a change in leadership and that was too fast and you didn't get any change in leadership. 
we had a sharp correction there and we the markets with all the fed stimulus with all the you know money printing etc everything just went parabolic this that previous bull market ended with a classic style a blow off top so that two year rally from there you could see how much the slope increased over the previous bull market move you know it slope doubled in value essentially so anyway so we that's why we were calling for a bear market back in december and you could see the effect so on the major on the monthly charts here you could see the dow basically tagged at the lower bollinger band that was a logical area to expect some sort of bounce s p pretty close to there nasdaq of course got down into that area so my thought is again we're nowhere near the end of this bear market maybe we get some sort of bounce lower high but it'll be a lower high than down again something like this that i'm showing on the drawings that's our favorite view our favorite view is not just right back to new highs guys okay so that's our bigger picture view next Chapter six, here's another monthly view. Shows you the same thing. This one has a little more time back and you can see I have fibs from the 2009 lows to the highs. Bear markets usually retrace about a 38% move of the previous bull market. So, you know, in the S&P, which is our proxy, that would have a 3,200, 3,280 area. You know, the NASDAQ has already made it to there, as you can see, NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100. But again, I think this has the potential to be a, bigger bear market so i think overall you know we might even get down to the, the lower 2000s on the s p over time but it's not going to be straight there next chapter seven here's a quarterly view of the indexes so we've had we've completed two quarters now this year you can see these big down candles here and it's you can see this was the previous slope of the the slope of the previous bull market and again you can see how you just essentially had this blow off moves in the final two years of that bull market. You can see what we've, what we've retraced. You know, a, a healthy bear market would come down to these longer term trend lines over time. Next, Chapter eight, here's a weekly view. Again, you can see stair step decline this year in the bear market. Last week, we, the initial rally stalled right at the nine week EMA. That's the magenta color moving average here. Next, chapter nine, here's the daily view of the five key major indexes. So last week we had a doji candlestick that had formed on Thursday and we stated my, in my newsletter that this was a potential area to watch for a re reversal and a long opportunity, okay? I said you could go long with this doji, put a stop at the low, and we got a decent bounce on Friday. I took some longs home on the weekend. If you did, your stop would essentially be at the low of this doji, okay? So we'll see, hopefully we get an upside move here. I'd like to see that over time, let this bear market rally unfold and give us a good opportunity to short, enter some longer term shorts again up at higher levels, okay? Next. Let's move on to the S&P 500. We'll look at this as our proxy index. So here's a monthly view of the S&P 500. And I always like to show this because Steve and I were warning about this way back last year in 2021. We talked about it in August, September, October, December, the, the wideness of this moving average ribbon. You know, you could see it just dwarfed anything in the past. These moving average ribbons are good guides. You know, when they get too wide, you're due for some sort of price correction. And then when they pinch, you can see here, that's when you're, you know, due for pretty sharp rallies. And that needed to be worked off. And you can see that's what's happened this year. Now, from a positive view, this is now pinching. It's still pretty wide with respect to the past. So, but this does suggest that we could have a bounce in this area. But my thought here is that when you get a bounce, it would form a lower high and then eventually this ribbon will probably go negative, you know, in a, during the bear market. Next, chapter 11, here's the monthly view of the S&P. 
a logarithmic chart showing it back to 2007. Again, we had that, that was the previous bear market, which was about a year and a half. And, you know, we had the bull market started in early 2009, and then we had that blow off move the last couple of years. So this is the view, our favored view that we posted way back in December. We were very clear all year into January that we began a bull market when others were still thinking we're just having a correction. And so far, this has been playing out, okay? Longer term, this bear market still has quite a long to get way to go. Minimum target, I think, would be this lower trend line of this logarithmic channel. If we get a bounce here, again, I favor a lower high and a move down, okay? One thing I'm gonna point out, guys, take a look at the 14 stochastic down here. It's been a pretty good guide. Notice how solidly it is below the 50% area, okay? But in bull markets, sharp corrections in bull markets, this indicator tends to find support at the 50% area, as you can see. So you can see how it's different this time, way below that area, just like what happened in 2008 there. And that, you know, was the bear market. Next, let's zoom out and look at a bigger view of this. So here's a monthly view of the S&P. This goes back to 97. And here I'm focusing on that 14 link stochastic indicator. Again, very simple. So you can see back here in the late 90s, you had that sharp correction there in 98. The 14 stochastic found support at the 50% area. You can see then it lost, it fell below the 50% area there in 2000. We had the tech bubble bear market. Went back above after the end of that bear market. It fell below here in 2008. And then all those strong corrections during the last bull market found support there. And here it's now losing it, you know, it lost it again. So again, this is further evidence of some sort of bear market. Okay. Next. Chart for 13, there's another monthly view of the S&P. Now this is a linear chart. Some of our targets longer term are these demand zones down here, 3,200 the 3,400. There's also the 61.8% FIB right at 3,200 and perhaps even down to here. A lot, of pre a lot of times when the markets go parabolic like this, they, they'll eventually retrace that whole parabolic move. And if that occurs, you know, the S&P could end up down in the low 2000s. Over time, guys, again, nothing this year. That would be if this bear market extends, you know, a couple years. Remember that the tech bubble crash lasted two and a half years from March 2020 to October 2000. I mean, March 2000 to October 2002. So a good two and a half years it lasted. Next, let's shift on to smaller time frames. Here's the weekly view of the S&P. And you can see this move down. You can see how these moving average ribbons are a good guide. They flipped back. They flipped negative back in January. Well, on this strong rally we had in March, the moving average ribbon simply pinched on the underside, bear squeeze. These are some of my uh, intermediate targets, 3,600, and of course, eventually this 61.8% FIB retracement of this move up from the 2020 low to the highs, basically 3,200. Again, I don't think we go there now. That could be a likely target maybe later this fall. Okay, next. Chapter 15, here's a weekly view of the S&P 500 with our KISS trend system. This is a weekly system designed to keep you long in bull markets. It's made for 401k type plans where you have you know, mutual funds, indexes, index funds that are linked to the market. And um, the DVTs represent higher low stops, so you have a protection. But as you'd expect, these all went to cash in January and they're basically gonna stay in cash. That's the weekly version. Next, chapter 16, here's the daily version. So a faster version and um, it too has been in cash. You know, went, went into cash in January. It went long briefly there in March, but then got quickly out. You could see the higher low DVT was 44.15 essentially. And we've been down from there. 
the re previous rallies stalled at this 14 length ATR. That's what I discussed in the written comments. That's resistance. Next. Chapter 17, here's some of my reversion to mean system trades. Again, I'm not going to go into those in depth here, but we've had 30 trade signals this year. Here's some of the recent ones. We had the bear long on both the SPY and ES at the bottom. They caught nice trades over the last month, couple months. And we still have an open short on the QE3, which you see on the upper left. It's still in a short trade. We did take half profits manually. And uh, should the market move higher, as I think it is our favorite scenario, this will likely close out fairly soon. So but this has been a nice system. And we still have one manual long entry open on the uh, bear long as you can that we kept on SPY. All right. All right. Now let's move to the shorter time frames. Chapter 18, here's the daily view of the S&P. So you can see the downward projection this year. Here you can count five waves down. And um, so we've had an initial rally up to some resistance, 20-day moving average, pulled back. This pullback into la late last week was a, about a 61.8% retracement from, this, from that low to the highs. What we favor is a move up and eventually fill this open gap. You can see these, we had two big gaps here on this big down leg in June. So we target a move here, it's 40.20 on the cash, then an ABC pullback, then some sort of move up eventually, maybe even up to here. I would love that, that would, you know, correspond to the 4,200 area, 4,300 area, 200 day moving average. Everyone would be bullish then, and this would be an area to look to start loading the truck short for a good meltdown. That's our favorite. The um, alternative view, which is definitely possible, would be we just sell off from here, as I show in red. Next. Chapter 19, here's the bullish percent S&P 500, plotted as a Rinko chart. This We have plotted as a one box size. And this is kind of a neat chart. I like some of these Rinkos. I pointed this out. A couple weeks ago, this lower trend line, I said to watch for a potential big support there, and you can see that played out. Next. Chapter tw uh, 20, here's that two-hour view of the S&P that I discussed on the opening comments. So, like I said, the alternative view would have the market just selling off right from here, kind of like I show. A little thick there. Kind of like... Um, kind of a wedge pattern, kind of like this, and then a move up, all right? That's our alternative view. Our favorite view is that we get a rally up, that we have a, a decent low here, we get a rally up, fill this gap here initially, and we have another pretty decent correction here, and then a move up eventually up into that area. So it would be interesting to see if this plays out or not. Next. Chapter 21, here's a 30-minute view, shows you the same thing. This one breaks down some of the wave counts. We had five waves up here. So far, we have an ABC. And, you know, under this count, we'd be a one, two, and then we move up in three. Again, if this is a three, it's got to go right away. You, you know, what the S&P can't do is, you know, just sell off again. It needs to go right from here. Next. Chapter 22 is a 15 minute view. Again, you can see how Thursday we retraced basically right back to the 61.8% fib here, undercut it just slightly for, you know, 15 minutes or so. That was a good buying opportunity. And uh, on Friday, the rally stalled out at this symmetry. So the onus is on the bulls here though, even though we favor an upside move, the, bon the onus is on the bulls to keep the football and rally it up, okay? Because if the bears get it, we bust down through this area, then I think we just go down, all right? The onus is on the bulls. Next. Chapter 23, here's another two-hour view. Here, I'm showing a couple symmetries. So here's one symmetry move. 
So here's another symmetry target projection up into this area. You can see your major trend lines. Next. Chapter 24, here's a 60-minute view of the S&P with some fibs. Again, you can see how we bounced off that 61 fib area on Thursday, rallied up a little bit. But again, the onus is on the bulls, you know, to carry this football higher if they're going to. Otherwise, we could sell off and go down. Next, chapter 25, here's the various cycle time frames. So here's the daily. So first off, these cycles have been pretty good on the daily. We had a bearish rally that showed up here. Resistance, that played out for a big dump. Then it said end of bull cycle. We bounced from there. Last week, we stalled at the ATR. That's your big resistance overhead. Here's the half day. We had a little bearish rally here. We got a pullback. This ATR is important support. And that lines up with uh, Thursday's lows. That's a pivotal key area. Lower time frames, we had the 13 to mark on the two hour. We bounced on Friday. And on the 60 minute, we have the ATR here. So these shorter time frames, price needs to get, bulls need to get the football through this, um, through this area, through the 10 yard line, the ATR on these time frames. Next, chapter 26, triple Qs. Weekly view, again, down four and a quarter percent, stalling right at the nine-week EMA there. Healthy correction this year, as you can see. Here you can see the 61 FIB really isn't that far away. If the market were to make another down move right from here, this would be my target, would be this 61 FIB. Next. Chapter 27, there's the monthly view. Again, heck of a correction there. It did get into our one of our target zones. Longer term, my target zone is down into here, 180, 200. Okay. Again, I don't think we go there now. At worst, I think we would have maybe another down move if we get it right away. But this would be something I'd expect later on in a bear market. Next. Chapter 28, here's the daily view of the triple Qs. So again, we stalled at this trend line. Last week, which also matched the ATR, pulling back. We formed this doji candlestick on Thursday. Little bounce on Friday, but it's got to clear this area. Bulls got to get the football through these 10-yard lines, etc. Otherwise, it is vulnerable to come down again in this wedge. Next. Chapter 29, here's the two-hour view, very similar to the triple Qs. Again, Bulls got to get moving here. Otherwise, you could see this potential wedge pattern where you could get a move down in the wedge. Although, if we can break up through here, that would be a positive. These are some of your targets above over time. Next. Chapter 30, here's the triple Qs, 15-minute view. We had a little tight coil last Wednesday, broke to the downside. Now, we did have a symmetry break here on this move. This is the largest move from this downtrend here. So we've got a higher low on Friday. Next, chapter 31, here's the daily KISS system, trend system, just like the S&P, it is in cash. It did go long here in March briefly, higher low was DBT was hit there and it's been in cash. These uh, trend following systems, again, they generally stay long in bull markets, but we're in a bear market, so they're not gonna be long very often. The last bounce stopped at the ATR. Next, chapter 32, here's the cycle time frames. Very similar to look to the S&P cycles, almost identical. You can see the ATR here on the half day is your big pivotal support. All right, let's move on to the Russell 2000. Chapter 33, Russell 2000 weekly. Just like the other indexes stalled at the nine week EMA, it did hit some longer term supports like this gap couple weeks ago. There is a little RSI divergence. Next. Chapter 34, here's the IWM daily. Again, similar to look to the other ones. So again, guys, the onus is on the bulls. By the way, futures have opened here. ES futures are down about four points, so no big move up or down right now. Let's move on to some market indicators. Chapter 35, here's the VIX. So as you know, during that last big market correction, and really all year, the VIX was unable to get through this big area. A lot of technicians were looking for the final bottom in the market for the VIX to get up into the 40s and 50s. And it became obvious to us that that wasn't going to happen. 
maybe later on in the bear market. Next, chart number 36. Here's the VVIX. And this is something I showed last week. Pretty interesting. So here's the S&P, here's the v, uh, VVIX, and here's the S&P to the VVIX correlation. The two are generally correlated. When they get uncorrelated, that's when this, this indicator falls below zero or at zero. That tends to be, it occurs around market inflections near decent trade highs, sometimes trade lows, okay? Like here, here's some lows and a lot of them are highs. Well, the last one occurred conveniently right at that high, gave you an early clue. You could see it occurred a few days before the big dump. Well, we, it didn't get uncorrelated here. It, it went to zero, it didn't dip below, but maybe that's indicating some sort of trade low. We'll see. Next, chart 37, here's the uh, percentage of stocks in the S&P 500 that are above their 50-day moving average. And um, it did get quite oversold here recently. We could see in the past, gets down to these levels. These were major corrections, major lows in markets. This, of course, was during the bull markets. But even in 2008, got down to some of these levels, and we got down to there recently. Next. Chapter 38, here's one I showed a couple weeks ago, the NAHL and some of these other indicators. I indicated a positive divergence here with price and showed the positive divergence on the NASDAQ stocks percentage above their 50-day moving average. And uh, I said that pretended to some sort of trade low in the short term, and that has been playing out. Next. Chapter 39, here's the NASDAQ with these breadth indicators, the new 52-week highs, 52-week lows, and the difference between the two up here. So this is an awesome indicator for bear markets. You can see the start of the bear market here. During bear markets, my observation is when the difference between the 52-week highs and lows approaches zero, conveniently ends up being around major tops, okay? This is an, also, it's cool, whenever this gets below its Bollinger Bands, you tend to get little trade lows like you see here where I have the boxes. So it's still pretty far away from zero here, but um, this will be something to watch over time. It's the wrong one. Let me redo that. Whenever this, um, you know, gets closer to zero here, maybe then finally a good short opportunity. So during this bear market, this will be an indicator you want to keep an eye on. Next. Chart number 40, here's the S&P versus the Chinese China market. And uh, as you know, Chinese market has been doing well. It had bottomed back in May, and you've had this divergence between this mark, that market and the R market. Some of the trade ideas we'd put out were Baidu, Baba, and KWeb, and they've done well. Next. Chart number 41, here's the S&P 500, and with the inverse 10 day put call. And this is a very fantastic indicator. Whenever you see big negative divergences, the indicators making lower highs, s and is making higher highs, tends to give you nice early warning corrections of some uh, early warnings of corrections. Like you had back here in December, higher high in the S&P, lower high in the indicator. And from the reverse side, whenever it makes positive divergences, tend to give you pretty good indications of bottoms. We had that positive divergence a couple weeks ago at that mid-June low. Next. Chapter 42, here's the S&P versus the S&P um, XOP consumer staples ratio. Now, this one isn't as positive, or this one is not positive. So consumer staples have been... Um, weakening. So actually they've been strengthening. Usually you see the opposite. But anyway, we've got to keep an eye on this. Next. Moving on to bonds, Charter 43, high yield corporate market tends to go where the high yield corporate does. And you know, that's been weak all year in this bear market. Now, a positive I pointed out last week was this potential double bottom here. Now, the previous week, it had stalled at resistance. It was previous support here became resistance. 
And um, but we had a potential double bottom. We're trying to bounce here. This obviously needs follow through, but you know that's a positive. This if this can follow through for the market. If it sells off, that would be you know negative. Next, chapter forty four TLT twenty year bonds. Last week broke out, took out this downtrend line. It it did close off the highs on Friday though. Next, chapter forty five. Here's the weekly view. So three weeks ago, I pointed out this doji candlestick. I said this looked like an area for a reversal. And I said a trigger would be taking out the high with a stop at the low if you wanted to buy the ETF. And this has played out so far. You can see you had divergence on the RSI indicators. Next, chapter 46, here's the uh, yield curve. So the yield curve fell on Friday. It's still not negative but it's getting damn close, okay? It did go negative though earlier in the year, guys, and I, to me, that's enough to pretend a future uh, recession. That's pretty much all inevitable in my opinion. Next, chart 47, there's the, the other yield curve. The first one was the difference. This is the ratio 10 year divided by the two year, same deal. Next. Chapter 48, here's a weekly view of the 10-year treasury yield. So three weeks ago, I pointed out this very ugly black candle doji, super wide moving average ribbon, negative divergence on the RSI indicators. I said rates look like they're topped for a while and to expect a correction, and this has played out. Hopefully, you guys paid attention. Next. Chapter 49, there's the bigger picture view. Again, bigger picture though, you know, things have changed. The Bear market and interest rates is over, which we began in the early 80s. So we broke this 35-year trend line. We stalled at some resistance here. As I show, I favor a pullback, but eventually I think rates will find support, maybe at this 35-year trend line and then up from there. All right, guys, let's move on and look at the various market sectors. Jabber 50, biotech. This area stands out to me and it stood out for me for a while. We pointed out this double bottom opportunity back in June, good rally. And last week I mentioned how it stalled at this downtrend line here, but it looked like a, it was forming a bull flag. And it really has that look to it. Looks like it wants to bust out of here, doesn't it? Next, Jabber 51, here's LABU. That's the triple long ETF if you want some leverage. Notice you got a nice base here. You know, you got a pretty clean shot up to about this, you know, 1150 area. Moving average ribbons pinched, so energy's bent up. This area looks like it will have follow through. Next, chapter 52, here's the weekly view of biotech. Again, one hell of a, this has been in a bear market since really early 2020, 21. 174 bucks up there, fell down to 61. Think about that, hell of a correction. What's a good buy off of this? longer term support. But in the short term, it looks higher to me too. Next, let's talk about the flying U ointment with this market. This is the semiconductors, SOX here. Um, the only positive I'll say here, I mean, it's super ugly guys, and it is, this is a negative, don't get me wrong. It is down at these lower trend lines. It is an area to watch for a potential bounce. For this market to rally, we need to see this try to bounce. Next. Chapter 54, here's SOXL, that's the triple long ETF. So if you want to watch for a long opportunity, you might be to get a lower long uh, trade down here. Next, Chapter 55, technology XLK ETF. You can see the effect that's ha had in technology this year, ugly correction. No changes overall, we're still in this kind of wedge pattern, still way below long-term resistance areas. Short-term resistance will be the 9 EMA and then the 20-day. Next, chapter 56, here's the banks. Again, same look as I showed last week. We closed right at the 9 EMA here. You can see big correction this year. Next, chapter 57, uh, transports. They had a falling wedge I pointed out back in mid-June. It played out for a bounce to the 20-day, high or low. Long term, if it can break above here, this is your big resistance now. Previous support is resistance. Next, chapter 58, industrials. 
still overall in the same pattern we've been showing. Short-term resistance now is the 20-day. Long-term resistance is the downtrend line here. Next. Chart at 59, utilities, XLU, have been very strong lately. These, this has been moving up as interest rates have been pulling back. You know, the, as you know, those two are highly correlated. Next. Chart at 60, real estate. As you know, that area has taken it on the chin badly, with, you know, the, with uh, where mortgage rates are. You can see it has bounced off the lows overall in a long-term downtrend. Next. Chart at 61. Home builders, as you know, home builders have taken it on the chin. You can see our comments from back here. Hell of a correction from this. Um, it has bounced over the last couple of weeks to the 20 day. This is your long term resistance here. Trend line and 50 day moving average. Final sector. Oh, Charber 62. Real estate, or retail. It's not the final sector I'm showing. Healthy correction this year. And uh, this right now, shorter term, is your resistance. It's got to get above this. Otherwise, it's prone to go lower. Now let's take a look at the energy area. That's another interesting one for me. So Jarber 63, XLE Energy. Back in early June, we pointed out the black candle, shooting star doji. We said it looked like an area for a top. We got a confirming down candle for a bearish evening star. Hell of a correction. Got quite oversold, bounced, lower high coming. They look interesting now. Um, if we do have another move down, I think down in here may be a lower risk buy. This is an area I do want to own just because it is in a bull market and it's had its you know healthy correction I was looking for. Next. Chapter 64, there's the two-hour view. Again, we had five waves down here, completed with the MACD divergence. We had a pretty good bounce, stalled at resistance, pulled back. We'll see if this can form a higher low or not. Next. Chapter 65, here's a zoomed out view of XLE. This is a logarithmic chart. So it did come down to test this logarithmic chart, the logarithmic trend line from 2020 low. So again, Assuming this is in a bull market, you know, assuming you took profits back here and you've been looking to get into energy stocks, even though this may not be the bottom, it's a lower risk area to consider maybe scaling into some. Next, Chapter 66, here's the weekly view. So hell of a correction on a weekly. This is kind of one of my thoughts. We get a bounce here and then lower high, but then this is all big support into here and then eventually rally to new highs. The time to really buy XLE was on this weekly broken trend line back in December that we pointed out. Next, chart 67, here's the bullish percent energy index. This, you know, a few weeks ago was at 95%. We, that's another reason we said energy stocks should do for one hell of a correction and we got it. This actually fell down to 4%. So. Whenever it fell down to that area, like I said, was an area to at least look to maybe scale into some of them. All right, let's move on. Oh, a couple these charts got out of order. So this is AMD. This I meant to have up at the semiconductors. As you know, semiconductors, like I said, have been trashed. They look ugly. These were a couple of short ideas we had in the semiconductors, AMD, and um, hell of a correction in these. Chapter 69, NVIDIA was another one. You can see that bear flag played, has played out. So for the market to have some sort of bounce, we need these to shore up. Big correction. You know, NVIDIA down here in the 140s. Think about it. November, it was 350. Hell of a haircut. Let's move on to commodities. Chapter 70, DBC, weekly view, down 3.36% for the week. You know, three weeks ago, I warned about a correction in commodities. We had RSI divergence. You know, commodities are in a bull market. You know, they've been in a bull market since 2020. I called for a big move up back in December and we got it this year, but it was due, got overbought to do for a correction. And we've had a much nice correction here the last three weeks. Okay. Here added fibs. I overall don't think this correction is done though. It may get a bounce here short term but it may need a longer 
uh, consolidation before it's ready to rock to new highs. That's kind of one of my thoughts. Next. Chopper 71, here's the daily view of DBC. It has that asymmetry move here, so it hasn't like, this hasn't been the largest pullback yet, but um, it is near, it is something to watch. Had a little bear flag that played out. Here's the fib, it's near. And we do have some RSI divergence. Next, Chopper 72, there's the monthly view. Again, hell of a move up from here. Maybe over time it, you know, it needs to still go through a correction, but you can see, you know, this isn't a long-term uptrend. And you can see, move an average ribbon on this monthly chart, flip the back here. Next, Chopper 73, weekly chart of crude oil, up three quarters of a percent for the week. This is kind of the pattern we're monitoring here. Now, if it were to lose this trend line, it could pull back to this area. This is big support, this 85. Next, Chopper 74, here's the daily view. Could see this lower trend line to monitor. Next, Chopper 75, natural gas weekly view down 8.8% for the week and one hell of a correction. It got very overbought here, here, and it's come down. Again, guys, you see the importance of these moving average ribbons when they get too wide, then you're due for these corrections. When they pinch, that's the time you want to be in trades. Okay, next. Chopper 76, there's the daily view. Essentially, it's back to the 200-day moving average here. So you do have a potential lower risk entry down in here, or at least to watch for a reversal. Next, Chopper 76, copper. Uh, big correction here as well. This also, you know, kind of pretends to a recession coming. Copper is a heavily used industrial metal pretty much in everything, and this has had a heck of a correction. Next, Chopper 78, DBA Agriculture. This area has really had a big correction. Look at this move. And it's lost its 200-day moving average back here, continues to move lower. So one hell of a correction in the DBA Agriculture area. It is quite oversold here right now, though. Let's move on to cryptocurrencies. Chopper 79, Bitcoin. We got to keep an eye on these cryptos. If we see this area start to unwind, that would not be, that would be negative for the market. For now, over this weekend, it is holding up here. Next, Chopper 80, here's Ethereum. It's holding up here as well. Now on Bitcoin, my longer term target's around 10,000. I'm not showing that chart tonight. Next. Chopper 81, US dollar weekly view up 0.9%. We do have some divergence up here to monitor, but otherwise price action is strong. One hell of a move on the dollar since that June 2021 double bottom there. Look at that move. I like to say the US dollar is essentially, it still is the best flea on the dog with respect to other world currencies. It's still a flea, but it's the best one. Next, Chopper 82, here's another daily chart we've been showing. This is something to monitor, Steve drew this potential ending diagonal where you know, it could chop around here to a slight new high, but then have a bigger correction. Next, Chopper 83, Japanese yen. Now this one interests me. The yen has had a hell of a correction. Japan is still inflating. They're still going through QE. They're just going to go through to the end. They're going to destroy their currency, and I think it's a future crisis coming. But you do have a potential wedge here forming, and um, it may be at a bounce area. So let's take a look at a way to trade that. Chopper 84 FXY weekly chart. You got to end it with a doji candlestick. You have RSI divergence here. So you got a, you do have a trade setup here. It's a very mechanical trade setup. Your trigger would be one penny over the doji high at 69.40. Your stop would be at 68.31. And your target would be around the 9 EMA. If it triggers, you go long and put your stop in. If it doesn't trigger, no trade. Next, chart 85, there's a zoomed in view, the same chart. You can see the doji here. So again, your trigger would be here, your initial stop here. You know, We'll see if it triggers or not. 
Let's move on to precious metals. Chapter 86, gold. Gold has been, you know, been disappointing. Gold back in 2020 hit around the 289 here. Big consolidation, rallied up to essentially the same area, double top back here in 2022. And it's had a heck of a correction. It's still holding this key area. But for precious metals, for gold to go, we need to see this ratio curl up. That's the GDX GLD ratio. Gold stocks do gold does better when the stocks are leading, and they've been uh, leading down since here. You need to see that reverse. You know, moving average ribbon is still bullishly stacked. It's pinching, so we'll see. The onus is on the bulls. Next, Chapter eighty-seven. There's the uh, daily view. Started to break this flag pattern to the downside last week. This could be a longer term target if it just continues to accelerate down. Again, watch the ratio here. You know, you can see it curled up a little bit on Friday, but really you wanna see this ratio break through this downtrend line. You wanna see gold break through this trend line. Best to wait for a confirmation on this stuff at this point. Next, Charber 88. Let me zoom out a little bit. So this is seasonality of gold and GDX, that's the miners. So July tends to be pretty bullish for gold and for GDX, for gold miners. So we are in July now, so there's a possibility that we could see this area reverse. But again, the onus is on the gold bugs now. Next. Chapter 89, here is silver, weekly chart. This continues ever down. Still kind of roughly holding this channel. This would be your next big target zone below if it breaks through this. Next, Chapter 90, silver on the daily chart. What can I say? Ugly, ugly. Broke this bear flag to the downside and it broke through this area. Previous support was lost. Next, Chapter 91, GDX, weekly view down 5% for the week. It's down into this area. This is your next big support area. Hopefully it doesn't have to go down to there, but you know, who knows? One thing I'll, I've learned about gold stocks, guys, these are not good long-term buy and holds. You look for a trade opportunity, you get in, then you get out of them. These are not stocks you want to hold for years like, you know, Microsoft and Apple, stuff like that. Next. Chapter 92, here's the daily chart. We did get a nice rally on Friday. We have some MACD divergence here. We have RSI divergence, okay? But this area was big support. It's now resistance, so it's got to get through here. The onus is on the bulls. Keep an eye on the ratio here, but still ways from breaking that too. Next, Chapter 93, here's a cool chart. Dug this one up from my archives. This is a GDX here. You can see a potential wedge forming. Again, price has got to get out of the wedge. But here's some things to monitor. The BPGDM, bullish percent gold miners index. This is with the nine EMA. And uh, if it can get over the nine EMA, that would be a good confirmation trigger. If the ratio can break the trend line, that would be another good trigger as well. BPGDM is now down at you know, 15%. So it's had a healthy correction. Next, Chapter 94, there's the Rinko version of the BPGDM. Again, it's fallen down to 17 and a quarter percent. Remember, back in April, it was up at 80, in the 80s. Remember, the bullish percent charts go from 100 to 0 percent. So it's oversold now. Now, let's look at some individual ones that stand out if this area can reverse. Chapter 95, AU, this has a beautiful wedge pattern here with MACD divergence. Nice trend line on the ratio. Won the watch. Um, Anglo Gold, if this area can reverse. Next, Chapter 96, SA, another one. Kind of a wedge pattern here to monitor. Next, Chapter 97, SBSW, falling wedge as well. So those are th three I like if the area can reverse. Next, 
Charbert 98, RGLD. Now this one I mentioned is a long opportunity back here in this black candle doji. I said a stop goes here and you'd still be long if you held it. It's still, it's still just chopping around here. But one thing I like is notice the ratio. It broke its ratio trend line back here and the ratio has been going higher. So this exhibits relative strength. Next, Charber 99, Newmont, I am watching this as well. We got a little Pinocchio move below here, but we did recover on Friday. Next, Charber 100, AUI, Yamana, notice this area, previous resistance. It was now retested as support. So this also looks lower risk. So those are some I like, guys. Now let's go ahead and move on. Look at some trade ideas. Charber 101 BBW was a short idea late last week. It's been playing out. Next, Charber 102 UPRO, that's the triple long ETF for the S&P. I issued this on Thursday. You can see your doji candlesticks. Here you had a low risk entry at the high of the doji stop here. That gave you a trade. You had one back here and you had one on Thursday. It would have triggered on Friday. So your stop would be right here. There's a gap up here would be a target. Next, Charber 103, Apple. Again, I'm not going to show a lot of trade ideas, guys. If the market does move higher, you know, a lot of these will go up. Next, Charber 104, Amazon. This one kind of interests me. Notice it's been holding this support. It's tested it five times here. This is a two-hour chart, and it's held it. And you got a big open gap back here that would be a potential target over time. I kind of like it here with the stop below if the market holds up. Next, Charber 105, there's the daily of Amazon. Again, you can see how that is resistance. It's quite a ways away. If it were to make it up to there, it would be a good trade. Next, Charber 106, Tesla, they reported their numbers over the weekend. I think they were just right in line, but we'll see if the market punishes them or not. Next, Charber 107, APA, it's an energy stock, um, a lot of natural gas. You got a nice doji candlestick right off the 200-day moving average, so along would be the high of the doji, stop at the low. You have your RSI divergence. This looks like a low-risk trade setup. Next, Charber 108, WLL, it's an energy stock, Whitney and Petroleum, again, Long-term trend line here that it's getting near. It's had a healthy correction from almost 102 down to the 60s. So it could be lower risk down here in the energy group. And that'll, it, that'll be it, guys. All right, again, have a wonderful, you know, rest of your day. It's Sunday at 7 p.m. And have a great fourth. Again, appreciate all of you guys who follow us at Breakpoint Trades, our customers, or if you're simply on our free list. Okay, appreciate all you guys. And um, again, hap hap happy 4th and see you on Tuesday. Take care.